The screen on the right is the Flex 6500. The screen on the left is the Yaesu FTDX 3000 running uh, NAP3 software through a FunCube dongle to the IF port. We have a pair of Bose companion speakers connected to the uh, outputs of both radios. The speakers have two inputs. So we're seeing the audio output directly from the uh, audio output jack of both receivers. We have a sound pressure meter here in front of the speakers to measure the difference in sound pressure. And I have a signal injection system set up over here with a small transmitter connected to a dummy load to simulate an on-band signal. So the, the goal here is to demonstrate the AGCT control and its effect or lack thereof uh, in the Flex 6000 series. So if you look right here is the AGCT control. The proper way to adjust this is to turn it up till you have some band noise. Not too much. If it's turned up too far, it'll cause distortion on strong signals. Now, we're going to turn up the RF gain here. With the RF level, I should say, on the transmitter. So you can just barely hear it and you can see it on the scope here. It's 71 dBs. Now we're going to crank up the level. So let me change the scale on my meter here. Alright, so the signal is going from like an S3 or 4 up to around S9 or so. And we're going from 71 dBs of audio to 104 dBs of audio. So it's approximately 30 dB difference. Uh, the problem here is obvious. Weak signals are going to sound weak and strong signals are going to blow you out of the room. So this means the AGC is really not doing anything at all. There isn't any AGC with this control set at that point, which is the proper point. So the result is when you're listening to signals of different volumes, then they all, they're all going to sound either stronger or weaker than the other. And as you tune across the contest or something like that, uh, you know, you're going to hear huge differences in signal strength. Uh, it can be a little bit fatiguing, uh, especially if you're wearing headphones. So you really do need some AGC, but you don't have any. And the only way to get AGC is to turn the threshold control up. Now, that's really backwards. Uh, threshold implies that uh, you're, you're increasing the level to where the AGC is supposed to cut in. But um, actually what we're doing here is increasing the RF input into the receiver. Well, regardless, uh, if I turn this all the way up, our noise is going to get kind of loud, so let's back the volume down, turn it all the way up, and then go back to where it was with the audio gain, and then turn the uh, transmitter back on. And you can see it going up to S9, down weak, and uh, nowhere near blasting as it was. So now we're going from 71 up to about 75. So we've got very good AGC now. So again, with this control set where it's supposed to be, you have no AGC. And the higher you turn it up, the more AGC action you're going to have. However, you do have to contend with overload. So there you go. There's not there's no hardware AGC, so there's really nothing that you can do about it. 
Uh, switch over quickly to the uh, Yesu. Uh, turn the volume down on the flex. And there's your uh, low level signal. There's your high level signal. We're not uh, changing much at all here. We're only Matter of fact, uh, it's showing about 72 up to about 73. So the AGC is working uh, properly there, and that's the way it should be. So there you go. Uh, you can draw, draw your own conclusion, but mine is that um, you don't have AGC on the flex and uh, it gets rather fatiguing during a, a QSO when the other guy's volume is constantly fluttering up and down uh, and the only solution is to turn up the AGCT and contend with uh, whatever happens. So there you go. Thanks for watching.